Going into the fall, The Creator was my most anticipated film, and a few days back, I was able to watch it. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Let me know what did you think about The Creator, or what is your anticipation level for the film? Now, for me, I was so excited to check out this film because it's a big budget blockbuster that's an original story and we're not getting enough of those these days. Not enough big studios are trusting creators with a vision to tell an original story. So the idea that Disney via Fox was trusting the director of Rogue One to tell this big sweeping epic story. I was so on board for it. The trailers looked cool. And one of my friends was able to see it at a test screening like six months ago. He said it was fantastic. So I could not wait to check this movie out. In fact, this week I'm at a film festival, Fantastic Fest, and it's playing, I guess the day this video drops is Tuesday, so it's playing tonight at the film festival, but I was so excited to see it, I actually didn't go to the opening night of the film festival when they had the world premiere, of the new Toxic Avengers remake, and instead went to the Austin press screening of the creator because I just had to go check it out. With all of that said, let's get started with the good. And what I loved about this film is that it is this massive sci-fi epic telling a new story. The lore covered spans decades. It's a global threat with big implications and multiple continents. You're traveling through these nations. There's space stations. And so it like feels absolutely massive and the VFX, cinematography, all that stuff is just spot on to create this believable world. There's just so much kind of world building that goes on to establish the conflict, the tensions that people have, why there's different perspectives on AI, and then just feeling like an actual place. It doesn't feel digital. It doesn't feel like a bunch of green screen. It's not obvious exactly how they did all the effects that they did. It's a convincing world with fantastic VFX. The reported budget for this movie is only $85 million. And it's the sort of film that makes you go like, what are all these other studios doing? I actually watched this as a double feature. I watched this one. Then I went to go watch Expendables 4, which has a reported budget of $100 million. And the creator looks fantastic telling this massive story and Expendables 4 looks awful telling a very confined story with a bunch of very obvious green screen. But with the creator, they went out and shot in locations, real places, and then enhanced it with CGI and production design and everything. So it just feels so lived in. It feels like a place that you could go that's believable. So you get sucked there's my mic right there. So you get sucked into the story that's being told and exploring this world that they have created to tell this story. Now, at a story level, it, it is kind of this massive global conflict over AI where different nations have taken different stances. And so there's this big looming threat of a world war depending on what's happening with this. And so there are these big, gigantic, massive battle sequences. The scale of the threat is entirely global, but the story itself is deeply personable, personal about John David Washington's character, his relationship to the war and the military, as well as his relationship to AI and what all of this has cost him in terms of his family. It's deeply personal. And so it's able to tell a story that's really about this guy and this child, but also it's in the context of this massive, massive threat to the world. So the there's the emotional core with him that's small scale, but also big scale. So it touches on a lot of different things, a lot of emotions and feels so big without looting, losing touch of the individuals in the story. Another thing it does really nicely is the way that it kind of deals with the AI conflict is to really show 
just how awful war is and how as soon as war happens, everyone loses, everyone suffers. It's a no-win scenario and it keeps putting you in these situations where you're seeing the victims of the war, whether they're the soldiers that are engaging in the war, they lost something that's driving them to this violence and this myopic worldview. The people on the ground suffering, you see their worldview of how they see the flip side to this and the reason to support the AI. Then you get the AI's perspective on all of it. And so it just actually explores that war is this terrible, terrible thing that harms everyone. And so story that's big, it gives you different perspectives on everything taking place. It's big, it's also small. There's just thrilling, massive action sequences. A lot of war ones, but also espionage ones, chase ones, shootouts. You kind of get the full spectrum in multiple sets, multiple locations, traveling across this sci-fi world, uh, but always keeping the humanity, keeping it personal. So this is the movie I hoped it would be. Just a fresh, new, big, massive sci-fi adventure. And I hope, hope, hope people go see this movie and it makes a bunch of money so we get more films just like this. It's gorgeous. It's the movie that every other movie should be looking at for how VFX can look awesome without needing to spend $300 million. And that makes you go, why on earth does this look so good for less than $100 million when all these other movies look so bad at over $200 million? So it's a win on so many different levels. Some people have been calling it like a modern masterpiece, a new classic. I would say that that's going a little bit too far. So let's move on to the bad. The big thing here is that this movie very much wears its influences on its sleeve. In the first five minutes, you're gonna be like, yeah, this is the Terminator, this is the Matrix. You're gonna go to certain cities and go, all right, this, this is pulled like straight out of Blade Runner. There's an Apocalypse Now, there's some Akira. Uh, there's a lot of Rogue One in here. It's from the director of Rogue One. And you can go like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of Rogue One in here. And so the influences, the director himself, it's pretty obvious. And I think that's why when you look at some of the initial reactions, it felt to me like it was 75% people raving about the film and 25% people being like, I don't know, that felt awfully familiar. And I think that's fair. The people that just, they see the influences too much, I think that's, I get it. I felt that it pulled the setup of Terminator and then the story from this movie over here and a bit of the aesthetic of Rogue One and the production design of Blade Runner. That blending together of things, that's what made it fresh and new for me. I mean. That's kind of what Tarantino does. His influences are right on his sleeve. When you watch The Matrix, its influences are right on its sleeve, but it pulls together a bunch of, they pull a bunch of things together and make something new. That's the way that I felt about the creator. I don't think the creator is as good as The Matrix or Tarantino's work, but it's that sort of thing where you're watching this amalgamation, this blending of a lot of things. It's like a best of real, <laughs> from a best of my influences all mashed up into one films, but, Someone watches it and they go, that's too derivative. I've seen too much of this before. I really do get it. Another thing about this movie, a lot of films recently I've been saying that they're, they could have been cut by 20 minutes. I felt like this one needed an additional 20 minutes where it's telling such a big story that I think a little bit sooner in the movie, I needed the bonding with the child to start taking place to just a little bit sooner to kind of make it flow a little bit more naturally in the latter half of the middle of the film. And then when you get to the third act, there's a pretty big shift in the story or at the second to third act break. And it sets up a kind of a new direction that things go, in which case it starts to feel a little bit rushed in everything that we're trying to do. And there are a bunch of sequences where I felt like I think we could linger on this a little bit more. The ache of this, the, the the emotion of this, we could linger on this a little bit more. It'd be better if we felt it more before we moved on to the next thing. But the movie kind of moves so quickly through some of these beats where it's like, I think we could have used another 15 minutes, a couple more scenes of bonding and just a little bit more time on some of these emotion scenes and building out the third act a little bit 
more. I'll also say on this one, the movie is built around a good bit of intrigue of the creator and certain mysteries as to what's going on and the significance of specific characters. And I would say that some of this is pretty predictable where it's headed. You can start piecing it together very early on where the movie is headed. So for me, I got the movie I wanted. I want Hollywood to make more movies like this. Would I say that this is like a new classic, a new masterpiece? I, I wouldn't go that far. I, that's not where I'm going with this film, but I do think it's a very good, it might be a great sci-fi epic that I really want people to go see because I want more movies like this and I just thought it was really good in general. Overall, I'm gonna give this one an A- minus on the entertainment scale. Let's go with a nine out of 10 and please go see this movie in the theater. Tell Hollywood we want more original films. We wanna trust creators with a vision to make movies like this. We don't just want sequels, reboots, re adaptations all of that stuff we want more original stories from creators with a vision so please go see this film also if you just like sci-fi big epic stuff like that go see this movie because you will have a good time with it and keep talking movies and tv too much bye